There is no loyalty except loyalty to the party. There is no love except love of big brother. All competing pleasures they will destroy. If you want a vision of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face. Anything that is truly classic is relevant to society from the day it was made. What I love about classic literature is how they never seem to grow old and I get excited every time I read it. 1984 is such a work. Even though it was first published in 1949, the themes that are addressed in the book and the film by author George Orwell are universal in the present time. His text is deeply important today when we're seeing surveillance culture take shape and sliding more into the control of groups and into the hands of individuals. Not only being watched, but being watched itself has become a way of life. Right now we're looking at technology that may help reopen the economy and keep us safe at the same time. When the technology gained widespread use in Asia. The key is that application is not about an absolute temperature measurement. It's more about detecting those individuals with elevated body temperature higher than the last 10 people that have been screened. Imagine a reality where, on an average Monday, you leave your home and head for the tube station. As you enter the station, thermal imaging cameras scan your body temperature. You are then scanned again on crowded streets as you come out of the station. And when you enter your office to go into work, you'll be scanned once more. And you might be scanned again when you go into large department stores like Apple. The new world after the pandemic could be one of encouraging widespread use of non-invasive technologies to keep us safe and help restart the world economy. But will this come at the cost of user privacy? And many are hopeful that technology like this will help us safely return to work. Then there are three phases of human trials, from small safety studies to much bigger efficacy trials. With lockdown lifting up in phases, many parts of the world still remain in quarantine. The global economy is shrinking. Oil prices hit a 21-year low, millions file for unemployment benefits, and the world awaits a vaccine. This uncertainty is stimulating renewed enthusiasm for thermographic cameras because they can detect elevated body temperatures as government and corporate forces explore familiar, tried, tested and safe methods of getting people back into work while minimising the risk of a second wave. The mask is not for you. It's to protect the people you care about. The FTSE 100, Nikkei and Dow Jones have dropped significantly at levels last seen in 1987. The OECD anticipated the global economy could shrink by 7.6% over this year. Central banks in several nations have slashed interest rates to make borrowing cheaper and spending much easier for the public. While global markets show signs of optimism in May, analysts still have no way of predicting when a complete economic recovery will be possible. In the United States alone, more than 30 million people have filed for unemployment benefits. Moreover, close to 1 million people have filed for benefits in the UK in just the last two weeks of March. With less demand, more and more people around the world are being laid off as businesses must cut overhead costs to survive this crisis. Since the world stays indoors, there exists little demand for oil. In addition, a feud between OPEC and Russia has lowered the price of oil even more. The price of West Texas Intermediate, a barrel of American oil, has turned negative for the first time ever in history. The world is beginning to realise how unprepared and inexperienced we were when trying to screen for and contain a highly contagious virus. Instead of dwelling on the past and what precautions we could have taken, we must strive to innovate and discover new solutions to this problem. As politicians think how best to get people back into work and navigate through the economic disruption caused by the coronavirus, many in the private and public sectors are turning to technology to solve this problem, in particular thermal imaging cameras to screen individuals for possible infectious diseases to ensure a safe and healthy working environment. These cameras, meant to scan and measure the heat that a human or object emits, were mainly used in military and in industrial settings. Still, many argue that by using the information gained from a thermal 
Fujin camera integrated with a comprehensive virus screening process, the diagnosis and detection of an infectious disease could become easier for employees, police and hospitals. How should we embrace thermal imaging technology and is it the solution to kickstarting our world and getting back to some kind of persisted normality? So how do thermal imaging cameras work? All objects with a non-zero temperature give off thermal radiation. Humans naturally give off radiation. As an object or human gets hotter, electromagnetic waves emit shifts to higher frequencies, which allows for heat detection devices to easily sense changes in temperature. Thermal radiation refers to all the electromagnetic waves given off because of its temperature. It includes infrared waves, radio waves and even visible light. The camera focuses on the infrared light that is being emitted by the objects or area in question. The device is then able to produce an illustration of the hottest and coldest points in an area or object. By varying the colors used to depict that section of the image, the camera creates a detailed thermogram, a pattern of colors representing the various temperature levels of the object or area. Some of the major players in this industry are FLIR Systems who have manufactured a device that allows you to attach it onto your iPhone so you have thermal imaging capabilities at your fingertips. The device generally comes with an app and can be purchased for around $350 or pounds. BAE Systems produce military grade thermal cameras. And then you have Raytheon who produce these cameras as well for universities and airports. Thermal imaging cameras have use cases such as safeguarding your home, locating suspects who are trying to hide or run away, checking the heat signature of your car engine, detecting air leaks in your home heating or cooling system, locating victims in large fires or natural disasters, pinpointing sections on a large animal to examine during a routine checkup. In the book The Culture of Surveillance, Watching as a Way of Life, the author David Lyon writes, We submit to surveillance believing we have nothing to hide, or we try to protect our privacy or negotiate the terms under which others have access to our data. At the same time, we participate in surveillance in order to supervise children, monitor other road users and safeguard our property. Social media allow us to keep tabs on others as well as on ourselves. This is the culture of surveillance. He simply reveals how the culture of surveillance may help to domesticate and naturalize surveillance of unwelcome kinds and considers which kinds of surveillance might be fostered for the common good and human flourishing. When technology is used the way intended by its designers, there are ways of imagining a safe post-pandemic world where thermal imaging cameras are widespread and one with the common good of the people at its heart. Constantly monitoring your health data and tracking where large groups are may become a part of everyday life if we are to save as many jobs and businesses as possible and kickstart the economy towards sustainable growth. Various employees around the world are installing FIFA screening thermal imaging cameras and even digital trackers to monitor the location of their workers in the workplace and during lunch breaks. In work settings, employees can match your name or other identifying markers with your health data. What if companies sold your data to the highest bidder? Why bets? Lost the way. That's frightened me. In a post-COVID-19 world, there's an increased risk of individuals and groups that can lay their hands on our personal information. Could data collection become more stringent? Could more identifying markers like IDs become associated with our health data? These all concerns in a world where thermal imaging cameras become commonplace. Health officials expect micro checkups, advanced temperature scanning systems and employee tracking to become a part of everyday life for the average person. I heavily suspect data will be harvested constantly on your location, current body temperature and whether or not you are abiding by social distancing guidelines. Screening systems may be used to oversee large crowds of people and also small groups of people who do not want to be monitored. 
There is a global effort and growing feeling among people that the extent to which we are monitored can be increased in preventive measures to stop a new outbreak. In 2001, the Supreme Court of the United States held in Keeler v. USA that the police officers violated the Fourth Amendment by using thermal imaging devices to detect marijuana plants growing inside a house. The basis for this decision was that a thermal imaging camera can tell you information that the average individual would be unable to discern by observing the home from the outside, which violates the Bill of Rights. Technology evolves quicker than the law. To protect the public from the use of excessive thermal imaging, average folk will have to become more vigilant if they wish to protect their location and privacy after this pandemic. In 2003, the world grappled with a severe respiratory syndrome officially designated as SARS coronavirus. Governments deployed thermal cameras at border checkpoints, airports, seaports, border crossings to check for one of the key symptoms of SARS, fever. Fast forward to 2020 and we have authorities scrambling to mitigate COVID-19 using the same technology. Despite these cameras getting smaller, for the most part there has been little improvements made to their limited functionality during the 15 years since the SARS outbreak. In parts of Europe and Asia, governments are pairing these devices with facial recognition and predictive movement algorithms to properly contain the virus. However, they need to be manned 24-7, putting healthy people at risk. In Wuhan, where the coronavirus first originated, they have already begun to roll out thermal cameras. One area of innovation that needs exploring is the utilization of sensor fusion built into thermal cameras with AI functionalities as a personal suggestion. Such an innovation can be trained to detect behavioral events such as someone sneezing, with the ability to identify and log individual faces that display any number of symptoms it is trained to recognize. One other area of improvement could be to operate the cameras from a central command center through a cloud system, sharing data between checkpoints in real time with expert healthcare advisors on site. With all that being said, in its current form, this technology is here to stay. For example, football might be a good use case. Match day revenue is a significant revenue stream for many football clubs. The main question around this technology is in relation to accuracy in fighting COVID-19. For instance, when a thermal imaging camera is used to analyze underfloor heating for blockage, the outcome is usable data that can lead to a problem being diagnosed and solved on the spot. However, when screening humans, a thermal camera can only detect variations in skin surface temperatures. It certainly is not a diagnostic device in the medical sense, but combined with a healthcare expert, it can help identify those who may be ill and unaware of their health status. A person's temperature can go up for many reasons, including exercising, overeating, stress, excitement, or even just being in a hot room. Moreover, we know that an infection does not always result in a body temperature increase. Workers can be spreading a virus without ever exhibiting any symptoms. Supermarkets are using it to discern elevated body temperature. So when you enter, your, your temperature is measured relatively based on a baseline group. So if a shopper's temperature is a little higher than others, they'll be asked to leave, but they are offered to have their groceries done for them. Also, there are still some question marks around the device's ability to effectively read more than one person at one time. No one can deny that proper screening for viruses is one of the most important preventive measures we can take collectively to safeguard ourselves from the next pandemic. Although thermal imaging cameras won't be enough to catch coronavirus cases, they do give organizations the ability to quickly examine a key indicator of infection in their workplace. Temperature cannot pinpoint the exact victims of a virus, but it can help one narrow the field when searching for those who have been infected. As screening technologies become more cutting edge and more inexpensive, we must remember we will infringe further on the privacy of those we examine. It is, in my opinion, a necessary technology, one where innovators, leaders and organizations should strike a balance between safe monitoring and the privacy of an individual. In doing so, we can reduce the risk of spreading the virus and still maintain the many liberties we take for granted. Does it come in black?